this topic, life in cities, is, is very critical. I'm, I'm questioning the quality of life, if that's where we want to go. key moment, I would say, uh, was SARS. Uh, I had been living in Hong Kong since 1994, working as the photo correspondent for Stern magazine. My son came home from school and said, you know, uh, one of my friend's fathers died of SARS, and my wife uh, just really panicked. And so I said, OK, I'm going to put you and Jasper on the airplane. This was December 24th and I'm going to stay here and do my Hong Kong project if it's the last thing I do before we leave. They left, I went out every day from morning until night photographing. I would have the films developed, I would scan in the evening, I would print all night. The, the house was empty so I could put everything out on the floor and figure out how series worked. And um, after six weeks or so, um, the project of uh, Hong Kong Front Door Back Door came about. Architecture of Density was very successful right from the start. And whenever I went to an opening, um, one of the first questions was, you know, how do people live in there? What's it like to live inside these, uh, uh, in, inside these monstrous housing blocks? And um, I wanted to address these questions. If you look at what all the rooms have in common, it's a rice cooker, it's an air con, uh, it's, it's a fan, fan, rice cooker, a clock, uh, an altar somewhere, you know, the color red, uh, and uh, a Chinese calendar. And if you look closely at, at all the pictures, you'll see that most of them, it's, it's April 24th, 25th, 27th, 28th. It's four, in four days I did this, so I didn't really have time to engage. I'm surrounded by a sea I mean, I would say there are at least 20,000, maybe 40,000 eyeballs looking out, and I'm looking out at, at a sea of windows every night, and it was, it was like a dream come true. I felt like Alfred Hitchcock in, in the rear window. Uh, everyone was always asking, what did you see? You know, they always expected me to see murders, fights, sex, I mean, this, these, these crazy stories, these dramatic stories, forbidden stories, but nothing. It's always the same. People come home, they're tired, they get themselves a dish of something to eat or they get themselves a styrofoam box, they kick up their feet and they turn on the flat screen TV. The little earth gods, you know, which are ubiquitous in Hong Kong, they're at ground level in front of the shops, they're in all the old housing uh, estates in front of the doors. Um, and for me, it's, it's the object which, which, which interests me. I love the way they were often jammed in between pipes, how they were so typically Hong Kong. They were jammed into a corner and there was a little cat going like this. And it was just, you know, it was all, you know, from, from decades of smoke, the, the, it was yellow. And, and I guess at some point, <laughs> one of the, the red pieces of paper had caught fire. And, and it was just, <laughs> it was just, it was beautiful. Every day I go out, I still feel excited and I still notice things. And I would say it's not on an hourly basis, it's, it's on a three minute basis. I mean, everywhere I look, I'm always looking up and I'm always seeing things, oh, that's that, isn't that interesting? And it just, it keeps on going. So, you know, I, I had this umbrella and that was for me another gift that suddenly I realized that all the topics I've been working on are covered by an overall topic. Which, which made me, uh, you know, which really contributed to my success because, you know, it, it's a very important topic now. It is a contemporary topic, megacities, what's going on, the, the, you know, the life. So I'm going to, a lot, you know, I'm giving talks and lectures and invited. So for me, it's been very, very fortunate, but it, it all happened through this one idea to come to Hong Kong. <laughs>